Hey everybody, today we're going to be looking at the new version of Capture Recording. This is one of my favorite features of previous versions, and I use it all the time, partly because when I'm recording MIDI, I'm not what I would call like a professional quality uh, keyboard performer. And so it's like I've got some skills, I know some basic techniques, but I don't like adding in the extra pressure of recording and so sometimes I just like to play, and if it happens to be really good, then I'll use it. Okay, that's kind of a, a summary of that. What this does is allows us to play, and instead of having the, the recording going or even a click track going, we can now just play, and it can capture that performance, not only with or with a tempo, but also without a tempo. So let me show you a couple settings here that matter. Uh, we're gonna right click here on our control bar, and we're gonna customize it, and we're gonna turn that on. So capture recording here under the transport. It looks like the record button, but it has the white circle around it. And so that's important. Previously, the way this would work is if you engage the transport with a pushing play, you could play some MIDI and when you were done you see nothing got recorded I could push that button and it would go back and add what I had just performed into it now most of the time I would still in these cases use a click track that way I would have some tempo notion And then when I push this, it would at least be somewhat close. And then I could quantize it as well. And that would be, that's how it worked. Um, now, we don't even have to engage the transport. So I can, don't even have to worry about the click track. I can just sit here. And now that I played that, it's stored in the memory. It's always calculating timing and all of that information. After 20 seconds, everything is discarded if you've paused. But if you pause more than a bar and a half, so 1.5 bars, that stuff is hidden but still included. So over 20 second pause, things get discarded. You'll start playing it's starting a brand new uh, capture recording but if you just pause for a bar and a half that's still included but it's hidden under the left side of the region So if you go inactive for a period of time, it's supposed to keep previous stuff that you've done and uh, not deleted. Here's the stuff I just did right there. You see that it played it. Here's the stuff previously. So that's the stuff I played. It was under the left edge of the region. Anytime you pause after 20 seconds, Apparently, it just disappears, um, even though you can drag your region over. Okay, let me demonstrate a couple other things with this. The next thing would be we can use the adapt tempo. So, now once I did that, you'll see it gives me the tempo for my project. And so if I wanted to bring in drums for that or something else, it's going to match up with the thing I just performed without any tempo or anything like that happening at the same time. So now I could come through like that. And 
And of course, we'll want to quantize some way. We'll use the groove track in this case. <laughs> And once you have this recorded, we could come through and actually set a tempo now. We could delete the tempo variations and the MIDI will now fit into the new tempo. See how easy that is? I just played that with no reference, not even the transport engaged or anything, and it all lined up really well. Okay, a couple more things then to think about with this. Let's come out here to measure nine and let's do a little loop here. This is during playback, not when you don't have the transport engaged, but say I do have it engaged with a click track. And let's move this up to the marimba. Just noodling around, right? Maybe I'm trying to get new harmonies or new progression. I'm just goofing around a little bit. I am now going to engage the capture recording. And you'll see, because of the cycle, it put it into take folders, which then I can come through and actually figure out which of the, the different takes I want to use from it. So another way that that's super cool and being able to capture all of the different takes I did and come up with one in the end that um, is the right one. Okay, the last thing we want to look at, let's delete all that stuff and pull the tempo back. Um, last thing we want to do is look at one other aspect or things that can be recorded with this. So we have, for instance, let's, um, let's clear out this channel for a second. Uh, let's just reset it and let's pull open, for instance, retro synth. Cool. And we will use the smart editor for a second just because I want to see if any of my faders here are already locked. I've got a keyboard here that has knobs and things on it. And I just want to see if, oh, there's one. Okay, so this one right here is already attached to a knob. Um, cool. So now I'm going to... And we're going to capture that recording for a second. So we push play. And you don't hear any of those changes being made because they weren't recorded. Let's go back and redo this one more time because there is a way to actually get a lot of that recorder and that's using our automation modes. There's one other thing we have to do to get this ready though, in order to record that. And that is inside of our automation mode here, you'll see that there's an option, which is record automation with MIDI regions. And this will be on all of the tracks that have the ability to do that with MIDI. And so I have to actually come through here and select this to say, record automation with MIDI regions. Now, if we have this already selected in touch mode, you'll see it's grayed out. So you need to do it first, but we leave it here in the read mode, at least how this is set up now. I would have thought you'd be doing this under touch, but it's not. Anything that's MIDI data now, you'll leave this in read mode, and we'll set this to record automation with MIDI regions. Let's double check that my knob is controlling. Okay, 
Done with that, let's push the capture record. Go back to the beginning. This is not automation data. So if I click on A here, you'll see no automation data there. If I go into the actual MIDI and then I open up our automation view, you'll see that data right there is the orange line. And I don't know, retro synth, right there, resonance used. So there's the data I made with that. Okay, so super cool way to be able to encapsulate all of our performance data into our final MIDI region. And all without having to push play or record or anything. And it will track your tempo, it'll track all the stuff you're doing and pop out this file at the end, which you can then use in a plethora of other ways. Okay, that's all what I wanted to show today. Hope this all made sense. If you have any questions, add them in the comments below. I'll try to explain anything that perhaps uh, where I went too quickly or if it was a little confusing, but check out the other videos I've done recently because I've talked about a number of these different things in previous videos, so just uh, scour through them a little bit and you'll, you'll definitely see me talking about some of these same techniques, but before the 10.5 update. Okay, that's it. Hope you're having a great week. We're going to be doing a, a lot of videos this week just to uh, continue to explore this new update. Hope you're enjoying 10.5 and don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one.